That's probably so loud. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Welcome everybody to the Wolf Den podcast. I hope you're awake now. <laughs> W- welcome you and all of your neighbors that had to hear that i don't know it like the audio doubled or something it got weird and all and all of your neighbors <laughs> that now have to hear that hello everybody oh is my gain like too high okay. how's that is there that you go better? Ah, ah. <laughs> all right now i should be better i think listen a little ragtag setup we got going on here i'm in my new house Yay. Uh, Ooh. This is it. So, like, I'm going to have a stream set up in the other room, but it's going to be painted on Thursday. So, uh, I don't want to set up too much stuff over there. So, uh, I, I, I set up in this room. for. I should have just set up in the other room. I should have just done that because we're probably going to have to take yeah. most of the stuff down anyway and move it around. Anyway. Uh... Here we are. Things are going. I got boxes everywhere. Life's life's interesting. Will, how are you doing? You uh, uh, yeah, are, I are am ill. mad because I, I wanted to do a bit where I take a COVID test right at the beginning of the episode, <laughs> but I forgot to bring the COVID test into the room. So now we're just going to have to sit here quietly for 15 minutes and do nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, I had COVID. Uh, I think I am still technically positive even though i don't really have any symptoms and i feel perfectly fine but i will take a test after the show again and we'll see see where we're at with when that did, when did you test positive wednesday so oh, i started show what i was just gonna say by the way everybody uh we didn't have a show last week if you're just yes. joining us uh we skipped last week because will got sick and i just couldn't be bothered so I started feeling sick on Monday, but I started getting like I was getting congested and I had a headache, which to be fair to me, I generally get those around this time of year. The seasons change, my allergies wreak havoc on me and I get congestion and I get headaches. It's fine. But they carried over into Tuesday and I like pushed through it because I thought it would, you know, go away or like it would minimize itself but i just started getting like tired and like i couldn't really focus and so i'm just like all right i I gotta tell bob i can't do the show tonight i'm just gonna i need to go to bed also i should also point out big reason why i asked you to cancel that to let me have a sick day is because i wasn't sleeping that was another thing i got like maybe you know i woke up at 4 a.m on monday Mm -hmm. and i woke up at like midnight and then it go back to sleep until like 2 a.m. on Tuesday. So like I just was not getting sleep. You and were then sick. Wednesday. You were, you were yeah. very, very, very sick. Yeah, I'm walking you through the, uh, the stages. Wednesday, I actually called out of work because I was still wasn't getting better. Um, same symptoms. Still can't sleep. Uh, and then finally, you know, I was like, I don't really have an appetite. And my wife goes, take a test. So I took two. And they were both positive. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> as soon as I got done taking the test, my wife started feeling sick and my kids started feeling sick. So had I never taken those tests, they would have been OK. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then that night I woke up at midnight and did not go back to sleep until three in the morning because my head was killing me. I couldn't breathe. I started to get cold sweats. I basically thought I was going to die. And I would have been okay with that <laughs> because that's how much, that's how painful it was. Um, but I woke up Thursday morning feeling fine. I was, pr- that's I was, COVID. I was that's, that I'm, sounds I'm, like your old run of the mill COVID where it, it's, it's, I'm, con- I'm still congested, but I'm normal congested. I'm normal for me. I'm not like what I was last week. The thing is for the past two years, everyone has been like everything I've read said, if you have a fever, a nagging cough, or if you lost your sense of taste, 
you probably have COVID. And throughout this whole experience, I've never had a fever. I never lost my sense of taste. And I didn't really get a cough until Friday. So the three things they tell you to look for in COVID, I didn't have. There's all the different types of COVID. Apparently. I, uh, while you were, while you were going through all, all of that diatribe that you just said, uh, <laughs> my roommate called me. It's November okay. 1st. He has yes. no power. Ooh. The, pa- the power in the apartment went out. Okay. And the electricity is under my name. Do, do I have to do something right now? <laughs> I think I, I think oh, I have no. to, I think I have to call the oh, electric company. Oh man, probably. Yeah, you'd have to call and get it transferred to his name. But like, what? I, we didn't do anything. I still pay for that apartment. We're not, we're not done there yet. Right. Why did the electricity oh. go out? It's a warning. <laughs> That's what it is. It's a warning. Yeah. What? I, I, that, do I have to pa- Do I have to put a pause on the? I mean, do you? I I can read the Xbox Live games with gold and the PS Plus do, games. Do that. Do that. I gotta. I gotta. Okay. I gotta call Con Ed. <laughs> okay. And then when you're done, uh, I guess I don't know. Vamp for as long as you can. I'll, I'll, I'll okay. be back in a second. All right. Hey everyone, it's the Will Show. Uh, we're going to start like we always do with, uh, the November PlayStation plus games. Uh, these games are available today. PlayStation games are available on the first Tuesday of the month. And the first Tuesday of the month happens to be the first of the month today, November 1st. So for PlayStation 4 Wait, hold and 5. On. Wood, if you're yeah, serious, hi. Wood, if you're serious, get in the, uh, get in the, uh, get in the discord. It's uh, the Wolf Den discord. <laughs> Oh man, you can you can continue. Okay, so for, um, so for PlayStation Four and Five, you get uh, Neo Two. Hello. Uh, the Hello? PS Five version is the remastered. Oh, oh shit, he's actually here. I'm here. I don't have a. I actually I do have a camera, but I'm not makeup. Hold on a second. Do you want camera not- or no? Yes, camera. We don't. You look beautiful regardless. I have no idea what this is about to look like when I turn the camera on. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> Hello, hi. Hello, Woodrow. Hi, I'm here to take Bob's place while he fixes okay. his roommate's electricity. Thank you for joining us on su- sh- such uh, short notice. This is my home office. You can see all of my wife's uh, history books that she uses. Quick, how do you make Discord switch it. between people? Can you? Can you? Like, wh- that, like I whoever's mean... talking. Like, it should switch between whoever's talking. I thought that was a Google Hangouts thing. Oh, it's a, you can do it or two. I don't know why you wouldn't be able to do it in Discord. I'm sorry so. if I'm derailing this. I just thought I would help. Look, no, no, no. You are helping. Bob's I got made already gotta... derailed this. Yeah, yeah. All right, you're only okay, getting okay, you're okay, only okay. gonna see Will. I guess you can turn your camera off. Wood. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, Wood, if you're just joining us, we are just running through the PlayStation Plus uh, games for the month of November because we like to tell okay. people that they get free games if they're subscribed. Hit uh, me with it. Okay, so for PS4 and 5, you get Neo 2. Uh, Neo that is the, 2? Yeah, that is the Team Ninja Souls-like game. N-I-O-H. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That Neo. game. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Not, not Nio, yeah. Now, is it Nio or Neo? I, I don't know. I don't think it's Neo. I've always heard Neo. Okay. No, that's a good game. That's a great uh, game. Okay, yeah, I've heard good things about that. I know the first one is based on an unused Akira Kurosawa movie. Okay. So that piques my interest right there. Um, next up on the PS4, you get the Lego Harry Potter collection. That is uh, both Lego Harry Potter games. So if you like Harry Potter, but don't want to support transphobia, you get this in your collection. You're not technically supporting anything. <laughs> So there's your, there's your loophole right there. We always encourage stealing Harry Potter stuff on this channel because how else are you going to enjoy it uh, guilt free? I agree. I completely yeah. agree with everything <laughs> Will is saying. They were his words, not mine. <laughs> uh, and of course, you know, the, they're the Lego games. They're generally 
good. So yeah, no, they're that. super fun. Really good. The, uh, the new so, Star Wars ones. Mm. I yeah, I want to. I played a little bit of Skywalker Saga. I want to play the rest. That was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, the last game, which I actually don't know much about, is a uh, Heavenly Bodies on PS4 and Five. I'm I'm really googling. Okay. Discover the ever-changing nuances of weightless motion in this challenging physics game featuring a collection of stellar scenarios inspired by the feats of space explorers and researchers throughout history. Uh, wrangle control of your cosmonaut's arms with the left and right thumbsticks oh, to push, pull, and clamber through <laughs> fully physically simulated scenarios aboard a scientific research station alone or with a friend via local co-op. Oh, okay. So this- the friend pop might be fun. That could be fun. So this basically sounds like a floating in space sim. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it looks like a, I'm googling it now. A nice little indie, kind of like uh, Human Full Flat, where you it's all kind of wibbly yes. wobbly and you control yeah. things independently, and you're floating around in zero gravity. Could be interesting with a friend. It's got ten out of ten yeah. on Steam. That's not bad. Oh, okay. That's hmm. All right, so I mean, look, you got three, you got three games uh, included. Two of them are well-known blockbusters, and one is a nice little indie game thrown in there. Mm-hmm. I'd say give them all a shot. Uh, over on the Xbox side of things, though, uh, I, at this point, maybe they should just stop. Because it's just like <laughs> I don't know what kind of games they give out. Uh, for the entire month of November, you get uh, pre- I'm going to butcher this name. Praetorians HD remaster. And from I, November 16th to December 15th, you get Dead End Job. I don't know what either of those are. I know. Like the like the past year, they've just been giving you nonsense. <laughs> With, it, and like it, it, I try to give them the benefit of the doubt. I try to give them the benefit of the doubt because like they're indie games and like they could be quirky fun indie games, but it's just like Come Ooh. on, man. Dead, Dead End Job does not have... It's like 55% on Metacritic. Do you think it's just nice. because of Game Pass? Like, they've got they've got everything on there. There's nothing else to give I, away. I, yeah, but at the same time, I do feel like Game Pass and Games with Gold, like, they serve two different audiences. Yeah, that's like true. Game Pass, Game Pass is like, you want everything at your fingertips. Whereas Games with Gold, it's like, I pay to play multiplayer online. You know, maybe I'll check out a game they give me for free or whatnot, if it's free. What's the price you know, difference I, now between like just getting gold or getting like the ultimate bundle that has gold and Game Pass? Because I think gold is still sixty dollars a year, mm-hmm. uh, and Game Pass is still fifteen dollars. A m- game Pass Ultimate is fifteen dollars a month. I think regular Game Pass doesn't Ultimate, Ultimate come with gold. Comes with both. I think regular okay. Game Pass is just ten dollars a month. Okay. Well, I would say the ultimate oh. caters to both. Oh yeah. But I mean, again, I feel like that's a very specific audience who wants like everything. Yeah, that I is mean, true. You know, <laughs> unlike the gold audience who apparently wants nothing. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and I'm just looking like that, scroll. If you scroll down a little bit, they have for some reason the games with gold for April of 2020. And it's like Fable, Project Cars, like those are known quantities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not, look, I'm not saying they should give Gears of War every month, but you know, something, <laughs> something a little more. Yeah, you need you need to put something on there. Yeah, because otherwise, you know, people already complain about having to pay for multiplayer on this, and if you're not giving them like an incentive to stick around, then they'll just drop it. I mean, I don't know if multiplayer is that important to a lot of people. No, I I agree a hundred percent. I don't. Yeah. I, I want to. I don't even want to jump ahead on your podcast, but I mean, I'm assuming <laughs> you're going to talk about the PlayStation thing with like two million people dropping off of the service, and that that is on our docket. Yeah, yes, that you, is, and uh, then that you, is well, you look at honestly, you look at situations like this, and I mean, I know it's Xbox, but like, it's not surprising. Like, you can see yeah. that the writing on the wall. Yeah. Um. I will say, though, over on to the Game Pass side of things, uh, that is looking up. That does mm-hmm. have some good things in it, including uh, Return to Monkey Island is launching Ooh. day and date on Game Pass. 
Uh, I know you're a Monkey Island guy. A huge. Did you play this one yet? Yes, finished it, loved <laughs> it, reviewed how is it. it. How is it compared to the previous games? I really liked it. It's it's mm -hmm. definitely with the art style a bit jarring. It feels very different, but the gameplay, yeah. the core cool gameplay in the dialogue and voice acting, it throws you right back to uh, Secret of Monkey Island and uh, whatever the other one was called, Escape from Monkey Island. It's actually right. a, a kind of a sequel to those two games and acts as like yeah. a third in the trilogy. And it's like a love letter. It wraps up the whole story. Uh, all the original voice actors are back. It's honestly fantastic. I really loved it. And the art style grew on me too as I was playing it. Ended up really appreciating right. its charm. Cool. So Very cool. Um, so that's coming to Game Pass. That's November 8th. We're also, as of today, we're getting uh, two of the Walking Dead games, A New Frontier and the Michonne series. Okay. Uh, I like the Telltale Walking Dead games. Oh, thank, uh, thank I didn't, you. I didn't finish Finally. all of them. I found the other fan. <laughs> Dude, that, that's so really? good. Really? That's I thought, so like, good. These, these are, like, the most popular games on the planet. I didn't finish all of them, but, like, I really liked what I played of it. I, I thought they were popular, but I swear I can never find another fan. It's so hard oh, to... Man. Every time I talk about how good they are, people just call them, like, movies or playable movies or whatever. Yeah. Or, yeah that's what like, made them uh, so good. That's why they're so yeah. fun. I mean, I, it, it's the type of game you could like introduce somebody to video games with. Oh, absolutely. That's really cool. The it's story like, it tells a good story. story. You know, telling. the controls are not too difficult. Like, the, it teaches you the basics of gameplay oh, for other games. So, the first one, yeah. the first Telltale game with Lee and Clementine, easily my favorite. Oh, God. And then, the, oh, yeah. The fourth one that capped it all off was also amazing. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta definitely try to finish that whole series. The, the I played third that, one, and I, eh. really, yeah, I, I played that, and I played the two Batman Telltale games, and the Batman games are the only ones I know people have played because it's got Batman in. Yeah, it. that <laughs> so, one was pretty good. I played uh, the look, first Batman. Yeah, I those are that fun. One. Yeah, those are fun. The second one gets real weird, but. Yeah, you know, it's the same basic. Concept. I think the uh the Borderlands ones they did just came to the Switch too. I think yes, in a collection See, or something. I already don't like Borderlands, and one of my big mm -hmm. problems with Borderlands is the dialogue and the fact that nobody shuts up. Yes, I and agree. I Telltale agree. games are a hundred percent just people talking and not shutting up. Yes, so. I agree. Mm -hmm. There's that. Um. Trying to see what else. Uh, Vampire Survivors is also coming to Game Pass. I've heard this was like a cult hit. I feel like there's a weird thing about this game that I don't that I'm forgetting at the moment. But I've seen this artwork, and like I've heard I've heard that title before. Oh, th yeah, this was huge for a little bit. Um, yeah, right. Our, our friend Scoot was playing this on stream a lot. Yeah, I've never played good. it. I think it's one of them games that's just really like therapeutic to play. I think. Okay uh I, I might be i might be wrong but no it's just like a bunch of chaos and okay yeah i mean sometimes you just sometimes you just need a little chaos to like ease yourself out of a work week no that's so, true sometimes you just gotta slay a bunch of demons yes yes uh yeah so that's it for all the big games coming to game pass of course check out your xbox or news.xbox.com for the rest of it um yeah i i generally just claim the free games on ps plus and games with gold just to have them because mm -hmm. maybe one day i don't know maybe i will want to play dead end job i won't <laughs> i don't but... think you will <laughs> no uh but it has helped me like play games in the past that i thought i had but i didn't so i recommend just just doing it just claim them i mean you may Why as not? well if you're paying for the service yeah, yeah um i could see bob is completely gone yeah i know i'm from... watching i'm keeping an eye on it i don't want to overstay okay. my welcome <laughs> i mean you could i could it, it but... would just be fine you could just like hang out and like as we're talking you could be like uh say a comment like drop a comment i'm out of nowhere since you're not on camera <laughs> just stay on the call <laughs> yeah uh i guess we should read i think we got one super chat so far from uh rp yoshi uh for eight months uh, just stopping by to use my prime sub thank you uh of course you know if you have if you have amazon prime you can subscribe to us with your prime sub that's how i do it and you should be like me and do it yourself 
Uh, you get that one free a month and it goes yeah. to waste if you don't use it, just like the games on yeah. gold. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, we had a lot more. Uh, Kyle West reviews. Thank you for the sub. Uh, Angel, Angel What Wings. Uh, hey, Bob, love your factor skit earlier. Keep up the amazing work. Uh, yeah, it's always fun when Bob does an ad and he gets pelted with something in the face. I know, I know both of those people. Those are lovely subscribers to both your channel and mine. Nice. Uh, Poke Shocks, thank you for 21 months. Guess I could drink now while watching the stream. Uh, yes, I don't recommend making drinking games out of our stream because I can't be held accountable for your health. Uh, Marimba Pirate, thank you for the subscription. It's Festo, thank it's Festivo, thank you for the subscription. Um, Jow sense Bob and Will, we love you. God bless. Thank you for the love. Appreciate it. Jeffrey Sorensen, hope you're feeling better, Will. Bob, good luck on the move. Uh, I am feeling better. Bob is already having problems with the move, mm -hmm. even though he left the place. It's with his old place. Uh, Hideo Benjima. Uh, oh, no, no, no. I'm way too old to embrace change. So am I. <laughs> but sometimes you just got to grit your teeth and just let it happen. <laughs> It's coming for us. As as said in uh, the 1990s classic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, death comes for us all, Oroku Saki. Oh my God. What yeah. a quote. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, uh, someone was making fun of my bald spot once and I said that to him and he just looked at me and goes, fuck you, man. <laughs> fuck you. He took that so seriously. <laughs> uh, Sachi, thank you for the subscription. Crispy X, uh, evening all. Good evening. Razzle Jazzle, thank you for the sub. And Mixer Tuna, thank you for the sub. Thank you, everybody. All right. I guess we'll start the show with the actual <laughs> topic. Uh, so the, the headlining, uh, headlining story for this week is Microsoft loses up to $200 per Xbox them sold. Whoa. I didn't see yes. that. That's crazy. Uh, in an interview with CNBC, Xbox head Phil Spencer admits that the Xbox Series X and S consoles are sold at a loss with the expectation that revenue will be made up elsewhere on accessories and games. It's a $100 loss on the 499 Series X and a $200 loss on the smaller 299 Series S. Of course, console makers often sell consoles at a loss with the usual exception being Nintendo. It's widely accepted. It's a widely accepted business practice to then recoup money elsewhere, such as from software sales um, and subscriptions, as, such as Game Pass. But Spencer's comments take on new meaning in the context of current console prices. Uh, last week, and we're, this was another topic. Uh, last week, uh, the Xbox boss said the company won't be able to avoid price hikes forever. Um, so yeah, it's Microsoft was kind of the first. Uh, console maker to admit that they're selling their system at a loss. Yeah. Um, and they, they make up for it in the back end. They've, they've said this since the original Xbox. Yeah. This was the first time that like the head of it actually gave you a number as to what they're losing uh, per system. And like $200 for what's supposed to be the cheaper model, the model that's supposed to get people in the Xbox door, so to speak, that's a lot. That's like more than half the price of the system. Yeah, I actually kind of always assumed that almost every console you buy is being sold at a loss, especially when you look at like a, like a loss about this much, especially when you look at the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox being essentially high, high, mid to high end PCs. Like I know yeah. what goes into buying that tech if I wanted to buy it all independently. Yeah. I've never understood how they got the price down to like 400, 500. So, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, t to yeah. me, this is almost like, of course, yes, of course. And, and it's then, not like, you know, it's not like it's off the rack stuff. A lot of this is custom. They got to custom format it. Get it. They got to get it all on one board. It's not like they could just plug in graphics cards like you can on a regular PC. Yeah. So there's there's that cost into it as well. Uh, so they definitely make their money back on the software, though. But the fact yes. that they're coming out and saying this it definitely feels like they're setting the groundwork they're you know ramp yeah. ramping on up to a big holiday announcement of just so you guys know even though we've put out one game this generation the price of the xbox yeah. is going up oh yeah so like 300 dollars for a series s and they lose 200 dollars. that means it costs them 
five hundred dollars to make that thing. That's insane. Yeah. When you think about it, because again, that's supposed to be the entry level system. That's supposed to get you in the door. That's supposed to even be your secondary system. You have your Series X in the basement, and maybe you have the Series S upstairs to just you know stream Game Pass games on, or you give it to the kids to leave you alone. It's just it's <laughs> wild that they. It's wild that they would continue to lose two hundred dollars per system like that yeah you know yeah also just the the s in general being the console that it is the underpowered console that you know gotham knights is blaming why their game sucks so much yeah. is because of a console that's costing xbox 200 dollars to make what a bane yeah. on the console existence like what what is the point of this yeah. thing <laughs> oh man it like i get the point it's a good idea but it's clearly not uh, financially viable. No. And I remember Phil Spencer saying, like, I don't expect to sell a lot of Series X's. I expect to sell a lot of Series S's. But I always see Series S's in store. I could, like, leave, go buy one right now and, and not be an issue. I don't think people are necessarily buying Series S's. I think they just want to skip to the, you know, the big one, the one with the disk drive. Yeah. So... Like, I have a friend who's, like, trying to get back into gaming. He wants an Xbox. Um, I'm trying to tell him to get the Series S, but he's like, no, nah, I have all these 360 games. I want to get the X so I can just put the put the disc in the, the disc drive. I'm like, all right, I guess, yeah, you kind of need it. Do you, so. do you have a S or an X? I am currently rocking a 1X right now. Okay, I love that. I have not, I have not upgraded to the next gen uh just yeah just because like you know one money and two like nothing's really like come out at me saying like you need to play this you need to play this next gen game on your next gen system so if you, you know like if you were to upgrade what are you grabbing i would probably grab the xbox first just because i like how they handle like the upgrade path of it where it's literally mm -hmm. just like move everything over no problem the s or the uh, x or? I, I mean I, I would just go with the X. Okay. I would just go yeah. full because I, I have all these like disc games that I would want to like carry over and mm -hmm. stuff. Well, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I would I'll eventually get a PS5. It's just, you know, everything Bob said about it just sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> and <laughs> I can I can wait for it. But like I played, you know, Miles Morales on a PS4 and it was fine. I'm playing Roller Drome on PS4 and it's fine. You know, friggin' Resident Evil 4 is coming out on PS4. So I don't really need to like you know, go and get a PS5 right away. No, the only true. game I would like upgrade for is Gotham Knights, but apparently that's shit. So oh, I don't dude, feel like I, I'm missing out. I bought that and I played it for about two hours and I regretted buying it. It's really, oh, really man. boring. It's just like, it's not an offensive game. There's nothing you can really point to and be like, it's so bad. Yeah. It's just really flat. Like nothing. Uh, there's nothing happening in the game. It, it, it kinda, is. You'd rather it just be like a traditionally bad game because then I would like love it to be about. a bad game. There's nothing even funny yeah. to talk about. You kind of just oh, get the man. keys to Gotham and then it's like, OK, go go beat things up. Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily feel too good to beat things up. Oh, man, it, I'm, I've been seeing a lot of the comparison videos between uh, Arkham Knight and Gotham Knights, mm. and it's shocking how similar they look, mm -hmm. even though one is like almost mm -hmm. 10 years old at this point running on unreal three yeah it looks so, like they built it in the same engine but this one gotham knights is unreal four right allegedly mm -hmm. so i don't know allegedly hmm. i don't know but uh anyway so i guess we could talk about the other part of this topic uh this was during a during a wall street journal interview phil spencer basically said I do think at some point, why do why do I always lose the quote? I hate. I am getting Bob's computer next uh, in two weeks, so hopefully I'll stop getting <laughs> slow down and maybe I can play Gotham Knight because I can just you know get it from Pirate Bay. Uh, Phil mm -hmm. Spencer said in an interview with the Wall Street Journal, "I do think at some point we'll have to raise prices on certain things." But going into this holiday, we thought it was important to maintain prices. We've held price on our console. We've held price on our games and our subscription. Uh, I don't think we'll be able to do that forever. 
I do think at some point we'll have to raise some prices on certain things. Um, so he's admitting that prices are going to have to go up, not now, but soon. Uh, and that is, very, it was surprising to me when Sony did it like inter- in international circles for the PS5. And it's also, it's still shocking that Microsoft is thinking about doing it because I would just assume they would make up the difference in other sectors like accessories or yes, I guess raising the price of game pass and whatnot. Yeah. That's what but the system itself. Say. Like, like that's what you get people hooked with. Yeah. And then you like gouge them elsewhere. It's also even more shocking to me with Xbox. Like when PlayStation announced it, it's like, well, I get it. It sucks, you know, but at least there's a lot of good games coming yeah. out and experiences and things to look forward to, but also things that are already there you can pick up day one. To raise the price of an Xbox S or X now, after the track yeah. history of like one poorly made Halo and yeah. some <laughs> promises of other games, but we have no idea where they are, aka Fable yeah. and whatever else is on the supposed Perfect horizon. Arc. Yeah. How, how, a, who is going to buy at this point if they haven't bought one already an Xbox Series S or X after they jack up the price? Yeah. I can't imagine uh, who that who that consumer is. And, and you know, going back to the, the fact that Microsoft loses money on all their consoles, like, like I said, they're the first company that I remember like admitting that. It was almost like they were bragging that they could afford to do that because they're yeah. Microsoft. They're, uh-huh. you know, Microsoft as a whole one of the most valuable companies in the world they can afford to sell systems at a loss at a loss this is basically their way of admitting they can't really do that anymore um so they have to raise the price i mean prices are going up everywhere but you would think what this one little corner of the world would be okay from that because especially because these prices were set up during you know back in the before time yeah <laughs> before all this stuff happening so and usually like once a price is set and the product is out like they'll maintain it at the current price because that's what the old uh i forgot what i forgot what it's called like the the old um profit margins were set at mm-hmm. so yeah that's just so baffling to me truly i mean yeah. it was only what like two two years ago I would say only about two years yeah. ago, Xbox came out and said they bought like 11 game studios to make video games with. Yeah. To yeah. go into this generation with nothing <laughs> and to still have nothing and then them have to rely on jacking up the price of their console. Because that's the thing, right? You can sell a console at a loss if you have the yeah. software to back it up. They're selling consoles at a loss. Then the only way people are buying and playing games is really via Game Pass. So they're making $10 yeah. per person every month. There's, they're not making money. They have no money. So now they have to check yeah. the price of the console up because it's the only way they're going to make any money. But where are the games? Where are the I games? Know. And like, I guess that's the real reason why they bought Activision because they, they need games desperately. And yeah, Activision, they've got games. They have a whole library of games. They have the most popular games on the planet. <laughs> you can throw that in Game Pass and that'll make up for it. It is... The, the the Xbox ecosystem is baffling to me and so upsetting because while yeah. I don't play sides, I don't have like, I'm an Xbox guy, a PlayStation guy. Obviously, I lean towards Switch for content, but I love all yeah. three and I've always been very passionate about Xbox. Like I've always wanted Xbox to do better just because it does so bad and it's underperforming yeah. so much. <laughs> and watching this generation is just sad. Like it is yeah. pathetic. Because it's not like, you know, when the Xbox One launched, it's like, all right, higher price point, you're forced to use Kinect, it's an always on system. Like, they did everything they could to, like, screw it up. What a bomb. What a bingle that was. Yeah. It, it, you know, they carried that albatross the whole generation. And now with this, they literally did everything right. They pretty much did everything they didn't do and everything Sony isn't currently doing this generation. They're be, trying to be Mr. Good Guy, and they're still like, they don't have anything to play. I know. I know. <laughs> it's like the one thing holding them back. It was it held and, them back last gen, and it's still holding them back this gen. 
Uh, I the, I the, I don't want to derail this podcast with this conversation, but it's something I don't Why get not? to talk Keep about going. ever. I never get to talk about it, but like <laughs> I don't feel like enough people are talking about this. I've said it three times already. It's been two years since the Series X and S came out. We've yeah. had one Halo that was half made. Like, depending right. how you want to look at it, we're coming up on halfway through this 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 console's generation. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. What what is happening? I mean, on the flip side of that is I mean, Sony's got exclusives. They've got God of War. They had Horizon. Um, the problem with that is those games are also still being released on PlayStation 4. Yeah. So while Sony's like embracing the next gen, they still have one foot firmly planted in last gen because like what, 100 million people own PlayStation 4s, only yeah. like 25 own PlayStation 5s. They still got to service that market somehow. So it's like what one is in next gen, but doesn't have anything to show for it. One is in next gen has something to show for, but it also keeps throwing bones to the last gen and PC and PC. Yes. It the is the a, true a, winners of this. Whole yeah, console it range. really is. It, this is a weird, really weird time in gaming. Nintendo on, you know, I'm failing in a lot of ways too, but yeah. They're really the only people doing traditional game like practices yeah. and like the generational stuff we're used to on consoles. They're really the only one that's like staying true to that, which is mostly because yeah. they're an outdated, you know, backwards <laughs> thinking company. But in yeah. this case, it's actually kind of working for us as well, consumers. Well, even like during the Wii and Wii U era when they were trying to be like, you know, do wacky shit. You know, they they still just made games and a game yeah. system. They didn't make a multimedia platform that can play Blu-ray and Netflix and all this yeah. other crap. Like they just made a game system. And like that's been their strong suit for better or for worse. They just make games. It is that's crazy it. to like think about the Wii U and how fa much of a failure it was. And yet they still put out all those banger exclusive games that yeah. helped, helped the Switch launch when they just yeah. kept re-releasing them. <laughs> Basically, yeah. And Xbox, I wouldn't say the Series X is a fail. In fact, it wasn't the, the S and X their most successful console launch of all time? Yeah. And yeah, they, they, the, it has been like selling better than the Xbox One was for sure, it's, yeah. It's their best console launch, best performing console and there's nothing and they bungled it and they have like 50 studios that they bought i have to hope pray and imagine that somewhere in the next year or two they're just going to start dropping exclusives like candy on halloween i i hope so i mean the the one game i'm looking forward to them uh, is perfect dark mm -hmm. you know because i'm a, i love the first, the original one i would love a new one but that game's been going through a really rough development they had to hire crystal dynamics to help them mm. and apparently like they're going through crunch right now even though the game is nowhere close to being presentable let alone finished so that I sounds just, like it's going through development hell i just want I that think fable most of their most of their games i think are going through development hell at this point i think fable is sucks. i think fable is going yeah. through development hell too yeah oh hey look the other guy my god he's back <laughs> he came back hey We're done. <laughs> uh, we got we yes. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As well. No, we did. Uh, we did the games with gold and the PS Plus games. We did the first two uh, Phil Spencer quotes about the price increase and how they lose money on consoles. So Appar apparently, I was muted that. to the stream. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, here, here's Wood's face in case. Oh there hi. Hey. I kept it on so that Will could see me. Yeah, uh, that, thank you for that. What? No, you're welcome. You guys want to hear some fun news about what happened to me? Uh, I would love yeah, to. The whole time I've been living in that apartment, three years, never paid an electric bill ever. <laughs> wait, wait, who didn't? Me. Anyone? Nobody. How? Whoa, what? Not a single person. We thought it was part of the rent because in the very beginning when we signed up for that apartment, they said, make it, make a Con Ed account and tell us the account information and we'll get everything transferred to your name. And I said, okay, here it all is. And they said, all right, great. And then I never got, and I said, is that all you need? They said, yeah, that's all you need. I, nev I never got a bill. My, the website, when I log in, doesn't have a bill or anything. So I was like, all right, I guess the management takes care of it. 
the account was never linked properly and all of the bills were going to the wrong address because <laughs> so, the bill the building is a fancy building and they have like a fun address and an actual mailing address <laughs> so we owe nine thousand dollars <laughs> oh god <laughs> So, uh, if anybody knows a good lawyer, <laughs> Crispy X said seven thousand. So he's the closest without going I, over. I okay. So you didn't pay an electric bill for three years, and they never mm -hmm. told you. Sent a letter, cut off the well, internet. They didn't. Had, they, uh, so, so I asked about that. Electric? I was, I was like, why are they cutting off the electric now? Is it because I moved? Like I'm moving out because we we still have the apartment for a little bit. Uh, I was yeah. like, is, is, is like, like that doesn't make any sense why they would cut it off now. And the guy's like, it's because of COVID because of COVID people weren't paying. So we just let it happen until now. So it's just a weird w way that that ended up working. They should have cut it off the month we weren't paying. If it was a month in, that would have been great. I would have sorted everything yeah, out. Because you were living there a few months before COVID started. Yeah, I wasn't paying yeah. for, for like a few months before COVID started. I'm I'm baffled by that. They gave you a pass for three years because of COVID. Oh yep. my god. Yep. So good on them, but also I'm very mad. I'm Does your roommate have mad. that? Like, do you and your roommate have that right now to split? He, when I told him, he was like, "That's fine, whatever." And I'm like, "It's not fine. We shouldn't yeah. have to pay anything." <laughs> Someone fucked up. <laughs> oh that is no! Wild, oh no! No, I, no. So okay. So wait. Did you answer this already? Why did it get cut off now that you left? Because of COVID. Because because now is the cutoff from COVID. It just so, so it happened just... that that. Oh how my it worked. god! Yeah. Something feels off here. I don't believe yeah. any yeah. of this. It's it's very it's very fucked. So tomorrow I have to call the management and then Con Ed again and and yell and start yelling at people. Are you a hundred percent sure you haven't been paying it? Yes. I'm 100% okay. sure I haven't been paying it. We thought the building management was taking care of it because I had nothing linked in my account. They were The building management was supposed to link my account to it. I would uh, say after the first three to four months of not getting a bill, you are safe to assume it's being taken care of, especially know, three yeah. years later. Also, also <laughs> the building management made me use that address that wasn't the right mailing address. <laughs> because, because in New York... These fucking buildings like want the prestige of being on a certain block, so they use the raw. They just make up addresses. So that's the way that the building was. It's wow. It's this is uh, wild. It's it's very fucked. Thank it's you, thank you for the two hundred bits uh, chipping in for <laughs> electricity nonsense. That would definitely yeah. go a long way to that nine thousand dollars. <laughs> Thanks for subscribing here on Twitch. Thanks for going to patreoncom slash Podcast. Thanks Manscaped <laughs> for sponsoring multiple episodes. I'm gonna need everything we can yep. get. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh. Hannah says I'm gonna puke. You should. This is directly yeah. affecting you now. <laughs> That is wild. Puke and then film it. We can monetize that. Yes. Uh, my, my computer is chugging right now. Anyway, where were we on the show? Can we can we okay. do a show, please? Do you want me to leave now? Should you I can stay out? for as long as you want, Wood. I very yeah. much appreciate you helping in, in, <laughs> oh in the way that you have. I just happened to tune into the stream the second you were like, I gotta go. And I was like, I'll do it. <laughs> Uh, well, bring Perfect. bring you two up and do it normal, and I'll just sit here. And if I have something to say, I'll say <laughs> something. May I interject? All right. All right. <laughs> it's a shame my daughter went to bed. I could tell her, "Oh, Blue, I'm doing the show with Bluey," and it's just some <laughs> random Australian guy. Uh, yeah. All right. Oh, All right, mate. <laughs> uh, okay. So we talked about uh, Phil Spencer said uh, they might have to increase the price on not just the console, but like games subscription services they might at some point the direct quote i do think at some point we'll have to raise the price on certain things but going into this holiday it's important to maintain price did, um, did you said, did you get to the article that microsoft loses 200 dollars per console because that is mm -hmm. that is yes. they uh relevant so uh specifically they lose a hundred dollars for every Xbox Series S X X 
They lose $100 for every Xbox Series X sold, and they lose $200 for every Xbox Series S sold. $200? The system is all... Yeah. There's only $100 left. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> That's a cheap system. Yeah. Well, apparently not. You know, apparently it's cost five hundred dollars to make, and that's the system that devs are complaining about. <laughs> yeah. So, have you? I feel like you guys have hashed all of this out already. Or am I? Am I re re bringing I, up old I, points? I said a lot More. about my disappointment. So your disappointment? We're just in Xbox in general, and yeah. I'll summarize we're, it for you. They bought like we're fifty basically... game studios. They released a console that was their best launch console ever. They put out one half-baked Halo in the last two years, and now they're going, we're going to bring the price of the console up. So that's, that's <laughs> cool. Yeah. I mean, PlayStation already did, right? Yeah, but at least they uh, have things to back actually, it with. Yeah. At least they have games. At least they have games yeah. and games coming and reasons to buy it. I said to Will, but can you imagine not having an Xbox yet and like watching this all unfold and then the price goes up and, and saying, okay, now's my time. Yeah. yeah this we're in a bad spot right now as, as a, as a world. <laughs> <laughs> everything, <laughs> I, I, everything's costing more. Everything sucks. You know, now that I think about it, if prices are going to go up, I might have to just go and buy a series X. Cause like, I want to get it now before. Uh, that's the that's expensive. Ah, that's how they yeah. get you. Yeah, that's how they get you. Get the S. The S is the, the like S. They, telling, they keep like dropping the price Wood. of the S. I don't understand that part. Like I was telling Wood, I have all these like games on disc. I would want to like play again, so I would need a disc drive of some kind. That's so. that. That's the problem that you have with the S. Yeah. And you yeah. can't plug one in because that uh, was like the first thing I wanted to try. Otherwise, yeah, I almost bought the. There's a bundle now at Target. You can buy a Series S with Modern Warfare 2 for free. Because Lord knows I'm not going to pay for that game again. <laughs> um, but yeah. There's that. Uh, but we didn't finish our trilogy of Phil Spencer quotes about how the business side of everything is doing at Microsoft. Because uh, Phil Spencer has revealed that the company's Game Pass is profitable. Speaking at the Wall Street Journal's Tech Live conference, Spencer also revealed that Game Pass is around 15% of Microsoft's overall Xbox content and service revenue. Spencer says how he expects Game Pass to stay around 10 to 15% of Microsoft's content and service revenue and that it's profitable for us. Uh, well, uh, I, who, who, who thought it wasn't? A lot of people thought it wasn't. Because, I mean, if you think about it, 15 bucks a month for... Like what, three hundred games? How is that? How can they make a profit on that? I mean, they've been dumping so much into it. I I can only assume that yeah. they're doing it because it would make them some money. You know, I uh, I when I used to go to uh, what's the Epic headquarters Gearbox when I used to go to Gearbox back in Frisco, Texas, and talk to everyone, they used to tell me wow, that they. Job. They they would uh, <laughs> they would hate games going to Game Pass and they were kind of hesitant to do it because for every download they got like a cent of royalties, uh, mm. and it really wasn't worth it for the publishers and the developers. So I always assumed that they that everyone was losing money on the Game Pass deal, but maybe they found a way to to reconfigure the revenue share and the profits and all that. Didn't we have a, a I, an article recently where? Somebody gave numbers about how much they made from from yeah. The there game was on like they were given a lump, they were given a lump sum like right out the gate to like debut on Game Pass. It was like five million dollars or something Oof. to launch on Game Pass. It's for like an indie game, and that mm -hmm. was basically like their whole profit for the whole year. Mm -hmm. So, well, that's a good deal. Yeah, so I, I think it depends on. The game, obviously, I think a triple A game is going to need a lot more than that in order to yeah you know, it, get into. You're, you're really gambling whether or not you're you're like positive that your game is going to not like hit some weird sort of like uh like Minecraft trajectory where like that yeah. was like an yeah. indie game and then it off out of nowhere. 
Uh, I'm assuming most games aren't going to do that. So having the backing of something like Gamepad is probably super helpful. Yeah. Yeah, you don't uh, want like a like a Scotty Pippen situation. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. That's a sports <laughs> reference. Yeah, you so know, uh, Bulls in the 90s, one of the most, you know, they kind of changed the game and they were making millions of dollars. But Familiar with Scott... uh, Michael Jordan in, of, uh, of Space yeah. Jam fame? Yeah, I'm familiar with Was this like a, a bit you so, guys like made no, up? No, you guys no, are no, no. Sports, actually, sports, actually this talking just, about something this real. This is just my one sport reference I actually know. Scotty Pippen signed onto the Bulls on like an eight-year contract or something crazy for like five million or something, 18 million or something. Um, and then very quickly became like one of the top uh, rated basketball stars at the time. and should have been he getting was the oh. number two rated basketball player right behind Michael Jordan. Yeah. And he and was Michael locked Jordan in to like, making, yeah, that's yeah. actually a perfect reference. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. <laughs> so what we're talking about. <laughs> Michael Jordan was making all the money in the world and Scottie Pippen was making not all the money in the world. <laughs> he actually, was. the the last year the Bulls won the, the championship during that era he almost quit because he wasn't get, getting the money he wanted. He didn't play like half the season. Mm -hmm. He's scheduled to have his foot surgery done during the season because he was like, yeah. screw you guys, then I'm going to get my foot fixed. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. uh, I will. He does. Tribute. Uh, back to Game Pass. It does say in this article, uh, Phil Spencer says, we see incredible growth on PC. On console, I've seen the growth slow down, mainly because at some point you've reached everybody on console that wants to subscribe. So that's interesting because I always assume that people were getting Game Pass on Xbox because it's called Xbox Game Pass. So the general public would think, oh, if I want Game Pass, then I have to get an Xbox. But this is telling me that people aren't playing that game. They're just playing it on whatever they already have, which is a PC. That's actually mm -hmm. great news because that means it's working. Yeah. Like the whole one of the, I mean, there's two great drawers to Game Pass. The first one is that there's a lot of games on it. That's great. Mm -hmm. Second one is that you can play it on whatever you want because it's got the streaming situation. So uh, people finding that out and you and utilizing that is great. I think great news. Also, I mean. Yeah. More people have PCs than consoles. I just didn't think that people were using Game Pass. I thought they would just use uh, Steam. But yeah, I just I, I we talked about Persona Five being on Game Pass, but I just re remembered that. So I might <laughs> I, I'm gonna probably just check it out on PC. To be honest with you, there you go. You used Persona music in your last YouTube video, and I was a little offended. Why were you offended? Uh, you know why you, I used it? Because I, I typed in Game Pass games <laughs> and it was the first one that they were showing. And I was like, oh my God, I forgot Persona 5 is coming to Game Pass. So I used that. There you go. Now you got to play the game. Now I have to play the game. I, I should have <laughs> yeah, shown it in the, the friggin' video if I knew that. You're if, honor if I remembered bound now to play it. When did it come out? Like, I mean, when did it come to these consoles? Start Persona of the month, 5. I'm pretty sure. Well, yeah, like today is fairly recent. recent so. You mean October? Start of October? I think so. It, yeah. It's fairly recently that yeah. they came to Game Pass. I missed it that much. It, it, was, it was the day we went to meet Kit and Krista. That, that, that day it came out and I bought it at the Nintendo store. Yeah, the day we went to meet Kit and Krista. That was fun. That was a week <laughs> and a half ago. Fun day. <laughs> Yeah. That was, was a fun day when we met Kit and Chris. <laughs> Suika Gouda says October 21st. You're a liar. That's the day that we met Kit and Krista. Yeah, but it's not yeah, the start of the month. That That's the day that we met very Kit much Krista. not the start of the month. True. <laughs> that is true. Uh, my, my, our dad watched that episode one with Kit and Krista. Oh and he God. said something in the car. Oh. I was just with him, but he said something in the car. He was like, uh, those two people, uh, uh, Cat and Corey, or something. <laughs> like, totally, he totally got it wrong. Oh, it's pretty close. Not too bad. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it seems okay. like Game Pass is doing really good. Yes, but it, the same cannot be said yes. <laughs> for the other guys. In its last uh, latest set of financial results, Sony has revealed that the PlayStation Plus subscription service lost nearly 2 million subscribers between July and September of 2022 following its relaunch in June. The number of people subscribing to the service fell 
from 47.3% to 45.4, no, sorry, 47.3 million to 45.4 million after Sony added tiers to the service which at its most basic level offers online gaming, additional features like cloud saves, and a handful of free games a month. The new tiers provide access to a large catalog of PS4 and PS5 games at the extra level and classic games and game streaming at the premium level. It's not all bad news for Sony. Despite the number of PlayStation Plus users declining and overall monthly active users going down as well uh, from 103 million to 102 million, Network services revenue, uh, which includes PS Plus subscription revenue, increased by 10%. This is presumably due in part to users signing up for the higher tiers. Uh, So, yeah, it looks like... I mean, 2 million people left. That's bad. Um, But people who have stayed, it looks like about 10% of them have upgraded to a higher tier. Which is... That's good. Good. Yeah. That's but not all bad. News. I think well, I think, you know, if you look at it big picture, a 10% increase is good, but losing 2 million subscribers is a much worse. <laughs> that's a that's a big chunk of your audience right there just gone. Either because they didn't like the new service you're providing, either because, you know, they can't afford it, they they want to move on to other things or they just lapse. Like that's that's a big hit, regardless so, of how you look at it. I'm confused. So P- PlayStation yes. Plus, uh, don't say yes like you was, You just knew I was going to be confused. Well, you're <laughs> always confused. <laughs> PlayStation, so you can still get PlayStation Plus, right? You don't need premium. They didn't roll it into like a no. more expensive thing, right? No, no. But they're saying PlayStation, they're not uh, specifying between the different categories. They're just saying PlayStation Plus overall. Oh, lost, that's right. Uh, it's, it's, too many subscriptions. it's not like Game Pass and, and Gold. It's Yes. It's a different tier of the same thing. Okay. Yeah. They okay, said they- this is um they lost two million subscribers between July and September. And the system and the service was relaunched in June. So they lost these two million after they had their big revamp. That's really weird. Yeah. You would think that people would be excited about the big revamp. But you said you said about 10% of those 2 million got I premium? I said re- revenue, uh, PS Plus subscription revenue increased by 10%. Presumably uh, oh. due in part to users signing up for... So like, like what you did. You are yeah, already yeah, a yeah. user, but you signed up for a higher tier. Okay, That's what that. I mean. It doesn't, I can't do math in my head, but that doesn't sound like right. it pays for the 1.9 million that left. No, no, it definitely doesn't. Because the highest tier is double. And yeah. I'm assuming not everybody in that 10% is getting the double tier. Yeah. Uh, in comments during the earnings call, uh, Sony Chief Financial Officer uh, Hiroki Totoki uh, admitted <laughs> that there hasn't been a great momentum as a whole for the renewed service, he allowed that Sony hasn't aggressively promoted it and predicted a recovery following better promotions in the future. Uh, in general, Sony's results and Totoki's comments paint a picture of a company weathering a tough period with more people going outdoors as the coronavirus pandemic ce- uh, eases. I could tell you that it isn't easy. Uh, a dry game release schedule and constrained supply of the PS5 consoles due to sh- uh, chip shortages. Halfway through its financial year, uh, the company has only managed to sell 5.7 million of the 18 million consoles it targeted for the full year. So this is just another th- uh, thing on top of an already uh, rough p- rough patch for Sony as a whole. But So why the- isn't... well? Yeah, why isn't Microsoft feeling the same thing with similar? If it's a global issue, that's well, contributing to I, this. I think I think it has to do with uh, what Totoki said. Like, there has not been great momentum for the new service, and that Sony hasn't been aggressively promoting it, which they haven't. They did their one big market marketing push in the beginning, and then that's kind of been it. Meanwhile, Microsoft every twenty sure, minutes—that's a good is point. Like, 
This is what's coming to Game Pass. You can play Game Pass on your computer and your Xbox and your phone. This is coming to Game Pass. This is coming to Game Pass. Hey, do you remember Game Pass? This is coming to it. Yeah, PlayStation kind of lobbed it out. And I the, yeah. pro- the problem is, I think that, that PlayStation's service is the better value. <laughs> it's just that Microsoft seems to care more about Game Pass, which is why it you, seems uh, like it's better. <laughs> Sony has the like the bigger marquee names in their subscription service, but you know Microsoft, a they do a better job marketing it, and B I think the fact that they heavily promote day and date releases, like when yes. a game comes out, it can it can launch on Game Pass. Sony doesn't really do that, regardless of whether or not it's first party. <laughs> yeah, but Microsoft, all right, they do have some games that that launch that aren't first party. But the, but the big yeah. thing is the first party day and date. Microsoft doesn't haven't had it in a while. They don't fucking have yeah. any first parties. Um, yeah, I will say that uh, PlayStation doesn't have like an app, like like a like a streaming app, and 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 Xbox does. No. So yeah, that's also a big issue. Great to be able to play these PlayStation games streamed to a computer or a phone or something. Mark on that. Yeah, I just yeah, bas- basically they're not they're not treat they they want you to think it's the same thing, but it's not the same. Thing. Right. Uh. Okay. So it's very strange. Very strange how. Yeah. Uh. That, that it'd be great to hear numbers from Nintendo. <laughs> how is <laughs> well, their online service will... going? Uh. Well, I forgot to bring this up at the top of the show, but. It's going well enough that we're getting Mario Party 2 and 3 tomorrow. Oh, wow. That is true. And I'm very excited to stream it tomorrow with you, Bob. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> doing that. I, I can't do it. Unless, uh, you know what? Maybe if I get bankrolled to do it because I need money now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, party like it's 1999 and 2000. Hit some dice blocks and become a superstar in Mario Party uh, 2 and 3 coming to Nintendo Switch tomorrow. Wow. Oh, sorry. This is Mario Party 1 and 2. This is not Mario Party. I was going to say wait. something, but I but I I believed in you. <laughs> well, well, because I I thought Mario Party was already on Switch, and the big news is Mario Party 2 and 3 were coming. I think we already knew about Mario Party 1 coming out tomorrow. Is 2 and 3 an announcement? Well, they they announced Mario Party 2 and 3 the same day they announced Goldeneye. So I, I, I understand if it got lost in the shuffle. But yeah, because they, they already announced Mario Party for Switch. I don't yeah. have my Switch nearby. Can one of you just grab a Switch and see what's on? No, Mario I'm playing Party... it. I'm playing it right now. What do you need? Okay. Is Mario Party 1 already on Switch? All right. No, it's I'm tomorrow. Gonna... I'm pretty sure it's tomorrow, but let me take a look. Okay. Then... <sighs> and And the... T- Oh, wait. Mario Party and Mario Party 2 coming to Switch tomorrow. One and two is coming tomorrow. One three, and two. But I'm is, not crazy. Is... They, what? they announced three the same day they announced Goldeneye. Yes, they announced one, two, and three together. Uh, they announced all three together. Yes. That was my recollection. Mm. All three were announced at the same time. So was Goldeneye. Oh, wait. So was Pilot Wings. Oh, you, you know what might be confusing? This is what confused me when it was announced. I remember now when they announced in the big <laughs> Nintendo Direct, I got pissed because the box art looks like it says Mario Party 3. Because this is Mario oh. Party and the dice is right where a 3 would be in the title and it's on 3. But that's, yeah, that's actually that's, Mario that's Party 1. Time. See, they weren't thinking ahead when they released the first right. one. Right. Right. So so they just, the chat just let me know, underscore and Kyle West. just Face your friends and family in a contest of strength, wits, and ability, Mario Party and Mario Party 2, now available. So they're out. As, okay. of, I'm, as of six minutes ago. I'm opening the app right now. I just had to install an update. Okay. There you go. Uh, breaking news. There you go. Out. Uh, fucking game. Because <laughs> I remember making that video. I said I also said Mario Party two and three, and then I was like, wait a minute. 
Because I saw Mario Party 2 and 3. That's what it was. Okay. It said coming in 2022, and then it said 2023. So you had Mario Party 1 and 2, and then you had 3 coming in 2023. But it looked like okay. it was 3 and 2. I wonder why they're no, staggering, I get what you're saying. staggering the third one till next year. I feel yeah, like that's. I feel like they spend a lot of time making, like, doing little, making sure everything runs good in the emulation, and they they do it for every single. Yeah, and, and well, they had to add a I mean, like, good job at the, at the very beginning. <laughs> But I feel like because the Mario Party games are all so similar, why not just release them all at the same time? You know, like that would have just been such an easy thing to do. But well, no, it's because they have to tweak every single game. Sometimes when they True. sometimes they, they, I mean, frequently they miss stuff and they put something on yes. Nintendo Switch online that might not run too good. Will, Will, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, case in point, Pilot Wing 64 uh, has an improved frame rate on uh, Pilot Wing 64 is causing problems on the Nintendo Switch. The classic fight, the bleh, the classic flight sim came on Nintendo Switch Online via the expansion pack earlier this month, October, uh, boasting improved frame rate compared to the original N64 release. Unfortunately, it's making certain parts of the game unplayable. I thought I was doing something wrong or the buttons were mapped and weirdly said IGN's Pear Schneider, uh, who has been playing pilot, pilot wing 64. They have to patch it. It's just not fun this way. Uh, <laughs> okay. Although most of the game is unaffected, the problem arises during the Birdman bonus stage, usually a relaxing tour of the Island, allowing players to take pictures and soak up the atmosphere. The Birdman stage is renowned for its calm laid back gameplay. The player suits up with a large set of wings, hitting the A button occasionally to keep Birdman in the air. Unfortunately, the timing of these flaps was originally tied to the game's frame rate, uh, so you can see where this is going. The Switch Online version of Pilot Wing 64 requires manic button mashing just to keep Birdman airborne, transforming the previously relaxing stage into a stressful feat of endurance. Uh... So yeah, that's what we're talking about. It's just games are broken when it comes to the N64. I was excited to play this one because I've never played the N64 Pilot Wings, and I really, really liked the 3DS Pilot Wings. I mean, well, I bet it sounds like I don't think it's going to be. Uh, hey, maybe I just won't make it to this part of the game. <laughs> well, yeah, it sounds like for the most part the game is fine. It's just it's one part is broken. <laughs> that that seems to be the thing with Nintendo Switch Online stuff when it first. When yeah. N64 games first dropped, everybody was freaking out about the fog in, in the water temple in Zelda. Oh, yeah. yeah, there's no fog to throw the whole game out. There's so much I, more I to that game. I agree. Throw the whole thing out. Also, I just finally got in the 64, and yes, Mario Party 1 and 2 is there. Confirmed. Oh, my God. There you so, go. You're welcome. But give, me, give me a full breakdown on what how bad the frame rate is. <laughs> I have already gone back to playing the game I was playing before that. <laughs> what are you playing? I am playing Ark on the Switch. Uh, <laughs> so because, fun fact, this is this was the worst Switch port ever. Uh, uh, yes. And as of today, they released a completely new version that they built from ground up because they wanted to fix it. And so I'm trying it out. Did you, did, is uh. it your fault that they fixed it? <laughs> I hope so, because it was literally the worst thing they, on Switch. It they was fixed atrocious. it in like three days since your video came out? My video came out in 2018. <laughs> Didn't you just make a video on Switch port? Uh, I am currently making one that isn't out yet. How do you know that? My last video was about cloud games on Switch. Oh, that's what it was. I was thinking mm. of that. I saw that. That was... Mm -hmm. a Mm-hmm. I, I didn't know you were making a video on that. This is a good guess. <laughs> anyway, uh, did we go through notifications? I didn't. Uh, we did in the beginning of the show. Let's see if I remember we where didn't. I did you, it, did you and Wood do that? Me and Wood did, yeah. Okay, we okay. did a few. We did a few. Uh, yeah. Uh, we left off. Uh, we didn't read Rock and Val and everything up. 
Okay, Rock and Val with 28 months. Hey guys, hope everyone is doing well. I'm excited for Pokemon Violet. Are you? Uh, TWD, <laughs> uh, Telltale, and The Wolf Among Us are some of my favorite games. Yeah, we were talking we about talked that. Uh, so, uh, some of the Walking Dead games are coming. And to the game fact Pass. that we didn't mention Wolf Among Us makes me upset because that one is. The I best have one. Wolf Among Us, and I have yet to actually play it. It but is I really the want best to. one. If you like That's any of I've them, you'll love that one. That's what I've been so, hearing. So. Mm -hmm. uh, Hector Bizen with eleven months uh, says, "Hey, Will, what are your thoughts on Last Ronin? I'm kind of a newbie on TMNT. Last Ronin is excellent." And it's definitely worth checking out. However, I don't know if I would want that to be your first Ninja Turtles comic because it's technically supposed to be the last Ninja Turtles comic. It's the <laughs> last story ever to be told with those characters. So I would say read the first year or so's worth of issues from the IDW run from like, I think that started in like 2012. Uh, read the first few issues of that, get a good solid foundation, and then go read The Last Ronin. The Last Ronin is excellent. I almost got some art from that uh, at Comic Con, but when I went back you to the booth, have. when I went back there, they removed it because they wanted the guy to uh, oh, yeah. sign it. I forgot his name. Uh, do, you want, do you want free puppy cam? Yes. Sure bring it bring it over real quick i'm just i'm derailing your whole podcast <laughs> that's the it's nature okay. of the show baby yeah this is not a professional outlet oh, oh. She's, she is oh. so big already oh my god we found out she's she five looks very old. heavy we were a month off yeah she's very heavy <laughs> she looks very confused by all of the lights oh. <laughs> puppy can puppy good, good puppy i'm so lonely <laughs> <laughs> there's no dog here there's no it's 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 very lonely over here in, in, in this house by myself but at least now you're five minutes there's away no people. so if you get desperate you can just come here but maybe yeah. we don't come here because we're still all recovering <laughs> <laughs> sean says invite me over okay all right dude I th <laughs> um Anyway, more notifications. Uh, yes. Migs Lunar Strike, thanks for the 24 months. Rock and Val, thanks for gifting us up to Pork Chop. Uh, Ariana, thanks for the 20 months. Yay, 20 months. Yay. Thrill House, thanks for the 100 bits. Anderson, thanks for the 100 bits. And Willow Davis, thanks for the 100 bits. Uh, yeah, we read those, I think. Yeah. Or Wood read those. Anyway, we'll have through some more stuff because we have a lot of news because we didn't do yeah, a show last week. Yeah, we have two week. weeks worth of yeah. podcasts to go through. Uh, Masahiro Sakurai is a YouTuber now, and in his latest video, he showed off a never-before clip of the prototype of the original Super Smash Brothers. You can feast your eyes on Dragon King, the fighting game, beginning at 1 minute and 25 seconds in the video at the top of this post, or jump directly to the moment by clicking this link. I'm, I'm, afraid, to, I'm afraid to play it, because my computer's being really shitty. But yeah. uh, you can just look it up, Masahiro Sakurai's channel. It's Super Smash Brothers Game Concepts. Look it up on YouTube. Yes. Uh, the Dragon King footage is clearly from an early stage of development, but you can already see elements of how the core to Smash Brothers franchise uh, plays out, like percentages uh, representing health, the icon, the iconic three platform battlefield stage layout, and characters flying off the edges uh, off the screen to their death. Fighters were just polygonal humans, not Nintendo characters, and they could use moves such as smash attacks, mid-air jumps, shields, dashes, and aerial attacks. There were no special moves, dodges, or even items yet, but the game's rules were basically the same as Smash Brothers. So, so I we we've seen some of this before. I I, I don't know if it was. I mean, there's definitely pictures of this. Yeah, I don't know if there was footage, but I remember there being footage because it was obvious that a lot of the, the characters are basically just stick figures. A mm -hmm. lot of those concepts were passed on into Captain Falcon. He's very similar to yeah. like the stick figures in the way that he even looks, and also the the moves that he does are very similar to a lot of the moves that these uh, stick figure characters did. So, so why would well, I know that if there was no footage before? Well, I know they've like shown screenshots of you know the you know, prototypes of Smash Brothers before. Right. I think the big deal here is that 
you have Sakurai basically walking you through actual footage of it right. and explaining to you how more or less everything was set up from the beginning in terms of like the core rules and move set. Um, and then just like talking through the development process of how it eventually got to become Smash Brothers we know it as today. That's what the that's what the big appeal is. It's just the creator of Smash Brothers walking you through how he created Smash Brothers. Yeah, no, and, and this is new footage that that we see in this. Yeah. It's very it's the cleanest we're gonna get from something that that old. Um mm-hmm. and, and it and, and it's it's awesome that he was able to pull it out. <laughs> he can do whatever he wants. We uh we yeah. I think we talked about this uh with Kit and Krista on the Nintendo podcast. Uh um he, Sakurai could do he's got his own company. He doesn't re- and he's prestige enough to like not have to run things by Nintendo. He just kind of yeah. does whatever the fuck he wants and he can get <laughs> away with it because they kind of need him. So Yeah. I mean, the whole reason we got a Kid Icarus game on the 3DS is because Sakurai's like, I don't want to make Smash anymore. I want to do a Kid Icarus game. And Nintendo's like, if we let you do Kid Icarus, will you keep making Smash? I guess. Well, in, in that case, Nintendo turned out to be right. <laughs> game, <laughs> game was not that good. <laughs> uh, Tech Niner in the chat says, also the stick figures in Melee. The the Polygon dudes. Uh, yes. those, are, those are also reminiscent of this. Uh, so I'm I'm glad they were able to put Nintendo characters in there because uh, it definitely would not have been the same. Oh yeah, <laughs> so uh, yeah, just a fun little thing, fun little thing from from Sakurai's YouTube channel that is a yeah banger of a YouTube channel. It is a very very fun watch. Maybe he'll start doing React content. Uh, <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for. Unboxing. I want to see unboxings. Let's talk I about after I do you laugh you lose. Yes, the tech, tech, <laughs> yeah. TikTok compilation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's talk about the big controversy, big drama. Modern Warfare Two. The disc is just seventy megabytes. Now, how could that be? <laughs> how good is that compressed? Uh, well, uh. Ever wonder what exactly you're getting when you buy a disc, a game disc these days? In the case of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, you're getting approximately 0.07% of the <laughs> actual game. Uh, Twitter user Does It Play revealed that the disc size for Modern Warfare 2 is just 72.23 megabytes, though the game itself requires at least a hundred gigabyte install on all platforms. Presumably, this 70 megabyte uh, is just the installer itself rather than the actual game assets. However, it's a stark change from even 10 years ago when video games actually had to, shock horror, fit onto discs that they were shipped on. This change solidly set uh, in sometime during the PS4, Xbox One generation of games, and it's been that way ever since. Uh, However, this has not stopped fans from complaining about incomplete data on the discs that they pay money for back in tw- uh, the late 2010s, PlayStation fans complained when the Spyro Reignited trilogy did not contain Spyro 2 or 3 on disc, requiring an internet connection to download them. Uh, while this might seem ridiculous in this day and age, some gamers who lived in remote areas or had metered connections don't always have access to unlimited gigabytes of data, and this prevents them from playing certain games. Spyro Reignited was later reissued with all of the data on the disc. Uh, the the example that I think of the most is uh like what is it the Mega Man collection on the Switch where yeah. uh, one of the cartridges you get the collection and only one of the collections is on one cartridge the other one you have to download. Um, this yeah. is the most extreme example of this that I have ever seen where it's <laughs> literally yeah. just a like a downloader like like it's what a is downloader and it's probably also DRM because like. You need to put the disc in in order to play the game. Yeah, which is it's, it's not you're not even getting the full benefit of of you're you're getting of buying you're the physical literally media. Getting nothing. 
You're literally getting nothing. You're getting nothing but but the burden of having to put the disc in every time you want to play Call of Duty. This is honestly worse than those Switch games that just come with the box and not a cart. Because at least then, like, you they give you a download code. This is literally wasting plastic. And and they don't even this gives you the illusion that you need the disc. Like this is giving you the illusion that you that the disc thing so. Whereas those you open it and you get a code. And then you're like, oh, yeah. that, that sucks. But at least you know then it's digital and you don't need the, yeah. the box anymore. You can throw the box away. Um, the last Modern Warfare that came out, uh, that controversy, that that game was a billion gigabytes. And Warzone was also a yeah. billion gigabytes. And this is uh, a little different. Oh, well, <laughs> it looks like the more things change, the more things stay. Yeah. Uh, so. I, Act, yeah, Activision with Call of Duty has not made uh, good good choices with this with, with this situation. It's it's like they have no regard for uh, your 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 drives in your in your machine. It, it doesn't sound like they. There were a lot of like Modern Warfare two stories that I could have posted in here. Um, there was uh, talk about how X. Uh, gamers on Xbox and PC can't turn off uh, cross-system play very easily, whereas on PlayStation, it's off by default. Um, there were I, there was a lot right. of articles about the content of Modern Warfare 2, how, like, you know, it was always kind of a gross series, but, like, this one is exceptionally gross in the way it depicts war and uh, armed combat. Um well, Modern and Warfare other, has like, always had a thing where, like, there's always one scene in the game that's, like, really, like, uh, I don't know, gr- grotesque. It's, like, there's always one scene that's, that's like, shocking. It's, like, wow, they, I can't believe they did that. That was, like, super violent or whatever. This uh, one sounds like it's a lot more than that. It's not like there's necessarily just one scene. It's, like, a lot of actions that you do as a player that's, like morally questionable and don't like are not handled in the slightest bit of care you also don't seemingly get a choice in a lot of those situations too they make you do exactly want to progress well that was the that was the big well i mean modern warfare 2 that's where no russian came from and that was right the big shocking thing but but in no russian you don't have to shoot a single civilian you can no, walk you, through that. You no, you, no. There, you hit you, a point where I think you do. No, not civilians. Uh, oh, police. Police officers. Oh, are oh, 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 that's fine though. <laughs> well, that's armed combat. That's all right. That's true. That's, they have guns look, they're in not, their hands at least. That's that's what I'm trying to say. That's those are armed combatants. They're not, you know, unarmed civilians. There's a situation in this modern warfare where you do draw your gun on unarmed civilians. And the game doesn't end if you shoot them. Okay. So in the in the first Modern Warfare back in the day, I remember the big one was see like the the, the horrors of a nuclear explosion. In the second yeah. one, it was no Russian, and then in the third one, you literally see a kid blow up. And the, and that yeah. one, I was like, okay, you're just trying to be shocking and and and, and yeah, over the top. Now. Exactly. Uh, so it seems like they're just taking that. You can't end every time you come out with a new Call of Duty, especially if it's a yeah. modern warfare. You gotta just up the ante and try to make people as the, uncomfortable as you can. The last one was uh, you were involved in a torture scene, and the game basically tells you to torture this guy. And you get to a point where you realize the gun you're using to torture him is unloaded, and then the next scene is Price yelling at you for torturing the guy. Yeah, okay. it's like you made me do it, motherfucker. People seem to really like this campaign. And I was surprised because Call of Duty campaigns have fallen off. <laughs> yeah. I I mean, I don't I haven't been reading like player reviews or anything, but like every website I read, even from the websites that are generally kind to Call of Duty, are like, nah, this game ain't it. <laughs> really? I, I heard I yeah. I heard good things from so, yeah, oh, I I heard decent things too. I've been messing around with the online. Um, I don't like talking about Call of Duty all that much because it is problematic. But I will say it does feel better than some recent Call of Duties. It's a little bit more fun. Right. I'm excited for Warzone, but I I 
I'll play yeah. the multiplayer when I have a purpose. And the purpose is yeah is to bring those weapons into, into the war zone. I mean, I'm I, we can play tonight. Let's get a jump. I have on it. I have a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Bob's got to come up with nine thousand. You know how to make nine thousand dollars quick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, but it depends if you're willing to make the only fan. Technically, I only got to come up with forty five hundred. Uh, well, that in the middle. So, look, how far is it to Mohegan Sun from you are? Ooh, that's a good idea. Can I drain Just the non Nintendo account? <laughs> Just go put it all on black and let it ride. Yeah, baby. Tell Dad he'll go with you. Yes. Uh, all right. What else? We have a lot more news here to cover. We do. Uh, next is the silent, the great Silent Hill return. Konami is finally acknowledging that they have Silent Hill game, that they own Silent Hill, and they're making games. Have you ever uh, start- played a Silent Hill game? Yes, I have played Silent Hill too. I didn't play it for long because I wasn't. I don't think I was in the right mindset to play that game. I was expecting Resident Evil, and instead I got this, you know, dopey guy walking through a town with a piece of wood that breaks in two hits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if I've played Silent Hill. I understand Silent Hill now better than I did back when I was a kid, and I feel like I want to give it a more fair shot. Okay. So, yes, that is my history with Silent Hill. Um, so Konami had a big Silent Hill press conference. They announced, uh, first off, Blooper Team's much-rumored remake of Silent Hill 2 coming to uh, PC and PS5. Uh, it's a PS5 console exclusive for 12 months, so it could very well get an Xbox launch later in the, uh, the year later. Uh, that was the big one, because Silent Hill 2 is everybody's favorite, and it's getting a full-on remake. Uh, it's being made by Blooper Team, who does not have the best track record. In terms what, of what have games, they made? They made that game the medium. Uh for that was that was that one Xbox exclu- launch exclusive that was gonna sell you on the system wood. Did it work? The, the game I played it, I didn't finish it. It was fun. Yeah. It looked nice. Is that but, the yeah. one that like switches between realities or something? Y- yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. two realities are like rendering at the same time. Uh, yeah, that seemed really cool. Oh, it, they the also concept, did the, the concept uh, is cool. Yeah, they also did that Blair Witch uh, walking simulator game that everybody hates. Oh yeah, no, that look that look yeah good, that one. Uh, so that's why people are like, I'm hoping like this is one of those situations where they have like the resources of a Konami where and it's Silent Hill too. They take it seriously and they make the fucking game the way it's supposed to be. Um, but we'll see how that turns out. Uh, there's another remake that we're going to talk about later in the show that I'm familiar. with to say on but uh hopefully this will this will be fine uh the next came next reveal was silent hill townfall a new game developed by stories untold and observation maker no code along with annapurna interactive uh and then there's a, a new silent hill film return to silent hill uh directed by the director of the original silent hill movie christoph Gaines. uh people really like that original silent hill movie <laughs> The, from like 2006 people oh, genuinely like that movie so i think christoph Gaines coming back to direct a new one is good for fans of the original movie uh i'm not one of them but you know good on you <laughs> uh next is we got another new silent hill game ascension described as a live real-time interactive series in which players watch together as the story plays out you can change the outcomes and be a part of the scene. It is being handled uh, in conjunction with J.J. Abrams' Bad Robot Games. That part, I think. Yeah. Uh, and finally, Konami ended with a brand new Silent Hill proper game called Silent Hill F. It is set in 1960s Japan and is written by Japanese visual novel specialist uh, Ryokishi Number no. 7. I think it's crazy that they've been so silent on silent hill for so long uh and then they just went nuts all at once well there clearly had to have been some sort of leadership change at konami because 
Konami did not want to make games for the longest period of time. They just wanted to make pachinko machines. They canceled. They canceled all their other video game projects. They fired Kojima. They're like, no, we're going to make pachinko machines and that's it. And fuck video games. So there had to have been some sort of leadership change over there because now we're getting, you know, we got really good collections of all their old games. We're getting um, a new, we're getting all these new Silent Hill games. You know, somebody has taken over Konami and it's been like, we're a video game company. Let's make video games. And they're starting with uh, Silent Hill of all things. I mean, Silent Hill fans are going to, I just think yeah. it's, it's, it's insane that Konami has been dark for so long and then all of a sudden they're doing all of this stuff. The last thing, the last thing was PT, right? Was, was Kojima's yeah. project that they canned? Uh, 2014 was PT. The last Silent God. Hill proper was Silent Hill Downpour, which was 10 years ago. That's insane. Yeah. And now they're going up. And- yeah, uh, now what, just like everything. I mean, why, why Silent Hill, though? They've got other properties that we would like to see stuff from, like Castlevania, like uh, what other what Konami stuff? Castlevania, Contra, Metal Gear. Oh, how um, can I forget Metal Gear? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Frogger is them. There's, there's uh, the rumored... Now, you know what? We had a Frogger PC game that I loved. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I there's a rumor that they're remaking Metal Gear Solid, and I yeah. would love that. And I don't even care if Kojima's involved. <laughs> I would <laughs> like God. for him to be involved, obviously, but I will still play the game if he's not involved because I just want to see what happens. I'm just curious, yeah. you know. I mean, it won't be as wacky or fun, but yeah. it'll it'll definitely be something. Like, not that it won't be fun to play, but it won't have that, like, sense of that Kojima oh. brings to all the games. We need his sort of, like, silliness that happens every once in a while. Yeah. There's, like, some weird, serious stuff, and then it's juxtaposed with, like, some wacky, silly. Yeah. Like, almost immediately. Almost, it's the switch is almost immediately. Um, yeah. And nothing will ever replicate that. Except yeah. for maybe the dog at the end of one of the Silent Hills. That's a thing. Yeah, the end of Silent Hill too. Um, that was two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, now it's time for all of the Resident Evil news that happened last yes. week as well. Uh, Not to be outdone. You can just uh, you can just read the Polygon article. Yeah. You don't have to read the R section. It's basically the same stuff. Um, but yeah, there is uh there was also a Resident Evil showcase. Um. The only thing really worth talking about is we got new footage from the Resident Evil 4 remake coming out. Uh, The showcase reaffirmed that the fourth mainline Resident Evil game remains one of the best and weirdest entries in the franchise. The new trailer also offered a peek at the new takes on Ada Wong, Ashley Graham, the merchant, uh, Father Mendez, and that creepy little weirdo Ramon Salazar. During the trailer (laughs) and new gameplay footage, uh, Capcom highlighted changes to the terrifying Ganados, who swarm and flank our hero Leon S. Kennedy in new ways, but Leon's reliable roundhouse kick and his chainsaw parrying knife and his ingenuity at setting a rampaging bull on fire uh, show that he can still hold his own against a torch and pitchfork wielding mobs. The merchant from Resident Evil 4 is also here too, once again asking you what are you buying and what are you selling. In the remix case, the latter is now includes gems that players can pawn to buy upgrades, weapons, and other items. New footage also shows off Leon's attache case, which players can play uh, some inventory Tetris. It'll be cu- the game's coming to PS4, PS5, PC, Xbox Series X, and S on March 24th of next year. Um, You're, now, yeah. as, as the so, biggest Resident Evil 4 fan on the planet, <laughs> yes. how do you feel about this? And also, will you get every version that it comes out? Every, every system that it comes out on, will you buy it? Well, okay. So. I'm definitely it's I'm glad it's coming to PS4 so I don't have to rush and upgrade my consoles yet. So I'm definitely going to try it and play it. I'm going to wait and see how the game actually is before I go run out and buy every single version of this game. <laughs> because like I'm watching the trailers and stuff. And I get this sense of 
like I'm sure, I'm sure you guys don't watch like those DC animated movies that they make that are based on specific comic book stories. They're faithful enough where that you recognize all your favorite parts from the comics in the animated movie. But then they change something yeah, and, and it, the change and it is so sucks. jarring because everything else was so faithful up until that right. point. And now all of a sudden they throw like this one little monkey wrench and you're like, there's a disconnect in your brain. That's what I look at watching this remake. Like, yeah, the village scene looks exactly like the village scene from the original. It's awesome. The shotguns in the same spot. That bull is in the same spot. The, the uh, fucking chainsaw guy comes out at the same moment. But like, there are all these like little changes to it that like, aren't necessarily for the better and it just it just asks you like you just ask like why change that like what was the point of that the biggest thing that they changed and like all the previews brought this up as a positive do you remember the dog yeah i i yes i i was gonna bring this up i saw uh, uh, so for but those I, this might remember, be a rumor i i it's something that oh no 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 uh -oh. every review every preview i read so for those of you who don't remember in the original game there was just a random dog caught in a bear trap you can let the dog go it's just a you know it's just a thing you can do That's and then later the in the game when you Why did my Discord crash? Disappear? There he is. My Discord crashed. Everything's uh -huh. sucking. Oh wait, so you're not live anymore? Are you still live? I see you. Yeah, we're still live. We're still live. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop showing you my okay. screen. Uh, I, okay. Let me try to limit my resources. Okay. All right. Continue. So, so the dog comes back, and Leon utters my favorite line in the game: "Hey, it's that dog." <laughs> and it was just a fun <laughs> little moment. The remake, the dog's dead. What? The dog's already dead when you get there. Yes. That is unplayable. This, it is. This, what? the closest equivalent I can find of this is in Batman vs. Superman, my favorite movie. Uh, in That's the beginning, when uh, <laughs> they introduced Jimmy Olsen, beloved yes. happy go lucky Jimmy Olsen, <laughs> and they shoot him in the head. Yeah. They kill they him. Right they in introduce the first him one, and then they the fucking movie. kill him immediately. <laughs> they just immediately. That is that is their way of saying, "Hey, this fun little thing you like from the original will fuck you." So, 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 no time for this. It's a man. Spoilers thing. for Resident Evil Four, but if you do say, is it? It's optional to save him, right? Do you do you even have it's to encounter to the dog in the first place? Isn't he like a hidden thing? No, no, no he's, it's he's not like a hidden right thing. on the path. He's like okay. right in your path. You it's one of the first things that you interact with. Yeah, you can choose to walk past them, but most people are not, you know, callous bastards. They see a dog in a bear trap. They're going to rescue the dog. Uh, and like every preview I read is like, hey, do you remember in the original Resident Evil remake when they changed the when the dog jumps out at you? Well, here they subvert your expectations by killing the fucking dog. That so is... if, you, if you save the dog, he comes back later and helps you in, in a boss fight. Uh... Yes. And obviously it's, it's, that can't happen. It's weirdly yeah. one of the most memorable things about the game. Like it's such a small yes. thing. Yes. Also, because Kristen, it's indicative. Kristen, Kristen chat asks, can you still pet the dog? Do you want to? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a sad pet. It, uh, it's one of those things that's like indicative of like the wackiness of Resident Evil 4. It's like, yes, Resident Evil 4 is an action game it's a horror game it's a genuinely scary game but it's also fun as hell and rescuing a dog and having him come back later to help you and having leon say hey it's that dog like that shit's fun and this game looks like there's gonna have it's not gonna have any of that kind of fun or it's gonna try to have that kind of fun and it's just gonna feel like they're trying too hard it, it, in in my mind, the whole dog thing is uh, like they're making the game. They got a lot of problems. They got a lot of issues making this game. They're 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 trying everything, and they're like, oh wait, we got to put that dog in the game. And they're like, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll get to it. We got to do all this other stuff. This important stuff. The walk cycle's weird. The uh, the way you aim sucks. Like we got to figure all this other stuff out. It's more important. All right, but what about the 
the dog though that's like people are going to be upset about the dog. i don't know just put something there and then we'll figure it out later and then they never figured it out later mm. yeah i think the worst part about it like what really bothered me was like reading like ign's preview and like they were like hyping it up as it's a good thing because they're subverting your expectation no it's not a good thing it's not the same thing as when they changed when the dog jumps out at you in the original resident evil they're two completely different things. How does the dog being too still lazy, jumps out at you? How's being too lazy to add the whole dog thing in subverting expectations? Because <laughs> you expect it to be there, but it's not there. Uh, next like, time yeah, I you make a to be terrible, there it was iconic. Next time I make a terrible shoehorn video just for a sponsor, I'm gonna go. Well, it was bad because I was subverting expectations. <laughs> I, I hope that they put a dog somewhere else. It'd be, it'd be, I'd be fine with it if you come across that dog and he's dead and you're like, oh no, that sucks. And then later there is one that will actually help you later in the game. Okay, with that, why'd you kill the first one? <laughs> yeah. To subvert your expectations. That would make sense if they, if that was the way they subvert your expectations. But to subvert no. your expectations <laughs> to disappoint you and make you sad sucks. <laughs> Did no one learn from Last Jedi? Oh, don't, don't. Moving on, moving <laughs> don't on. Don't do that. <laughs> Keep my grumpy Luke Skywalker right here in case he needs to look at you disappointed too. <laughs> Did you get that signed by Mark? Uh, I should get it signed by him. For $400. And see, see yeah, what he thinks that, of it. He charges like a lot of Comic-Con. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> mad that like I didn't get his autograph before Star Wars came back, because it was only a hundred. Oh my god! And as soon as Star Wars came back, that shit went high. Anybody in the chat, if you want my autograph, it's nine thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, uh, so they're remaking Resident Evil Four. Don't need to remake, but there's another Resident Evil game that could stand to use, get a remake: Code Veronica. So I've never uh, played Code Veronica. We were big I have. time. We were big time Resident Evil fans. My I played all of them played... until uh, six. I didn't play six because I heard that was garbage, and then I just never. So but I, I, but I didn't play Code, play Code Veronica. Veronica. I tried playing Code Veronica after I had already played Resident Evil Four, and I'm like, you can't go back to this. Yeah. You can't go back to this style of Resident Evil. Um, but somebody asked. Uh, Resident Evil 4 remake producer uh, Yoshiaki Hira, Hirabayashi nailed it. Long one. Uh, and when when asked about it, he said, maybe. <laughs> That's an article? This is a whole article yes. for that? <laughs> this is a whole article. That's, a whole, that's the whole article. <laughs> <laughs> why, is it, why, is, why are we reporting? Why is that? And who was that? Because Gamer games radar, yeah. Uh, somebody got Noisy paid Pixel was able to, to write that. A, a maybe out of him, yeah. Though insisting that his current focus remains on the Resident Evil make, um, Hirobayashi did admit that if the opportunity comes, maybe we get we may get the Resident Evil Code Veronica remake so many still dream of. I think because like Code Veronica is the one game of that old style Resident Evil that like. Need, there's a need of an update. You know, that game is technically the real Resident Evil. And it, it hasn't been touched since the, the PS2 version, like however many years ago. I would love to so, experience that story in a way that is palatable. Because a lot of people exactly. said it was their favorite Resident Evil. Yeah. So I, to I'm have it in a way that's that. like easily playable, because like Resident Evil 4 is uh, literally available on every console on the planet. You can play it on just about anything. You can play it in so VR. You don't need a, a new version of it. You can even play it in VR. And it's sick so in VR. Cover, yeah, it's amazing. Code Veronica is not... I don't even think it's on the new consoles. Or if it is, it's like a port of the PS2 version. That was a big Dreamcast. That would make the more... more... Yeah, because it was going to be a Dreamcast game. Um... And they were going to call it Resident Evil 3, but they had a contract with Sony where all numbered Resident Evils had to go on PlayStation. So Resident Evil 3, which was just supposed to be a side story, became Resident Evil 3. Mm -hmm. 
that makes a lot more sense uh, where the that story ends up. Because Resident yeah. Evil Three is like it, it's a completely different thing from the other games before. Yeah, and like I'm playing the Resident Evil Three remake now, and it it literally uses the same assets from Resident Evil Two, like the same level design and everything. Yeah, I didn't like when they released those so close to each other. I was like, you definitely yeah. didn't try too hard on the three, then, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Lou the Lunatic, thanks for the 17 months. Uh, all right, let's plot through some more. We got Steam hit 30. 30 uh, Steam has broken it? its own prior records. Uh, on October 23rd, it has hit a total of 30,012,957 users online at the same time. Uh, this is courtesy of Steam's own charts, although Steam DB scores a bit higher at 30,032,005. I saw parts that of is, this story and uh 30 million is in in an in insane amount. Like they they Yes. They uh, only just recently like hit 20 million I think. And that was like a milestone for them. Uh back in January 2021, 20, Steam broke 25 million. January so. you said? January of last year. Wow. And that's like peak. Well, not peak COVID. Is that peak COVID? It was, it was COVID times. Yeah. So, like, you'd think that yeah. there'd be a lot of viewer, a lot of people playing it then, but the user base is expanding. Yeah. Very cool. Now get some more Steam decks yeah. in people's hands. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next, every PS2 manual scanned. Why do I? Why? <laughs> why do i care about this this is a good uh <clears throat> this is a good resource to have um so somebody just uploaded every uh every manual for every united states uh playstation 2 game uh has uploaded it in 4k <laughs> so now you have a uh, resource of high quality uh playstation 2 manuals if you need one that is a lot of time that is yeah. so much work. That that's <laughs> well, yeah. That, that's insane for free. Uh, I, I, we we print game covers sometimes, but that's already like a like a. You could find those pretty easily, right? Yeah, like scans. Yeah, no, game manuals covers. are a whole different thing. It's like that's pages and pages of information. You know, you often if you buy a used game, it often doesn't. Come manual people think to save now can you find the manual for uh star wars x-wing for the for the pc because that game had a drm that required the manual and i loved that game and we lost the manual yeah <laughs> it was a floppy disk dos game i think yes oh somebody's got a pdf to that manual sent sent it over here. Uh, sure it's somewhere uh so yeah, this is over on the archive.org. Uh it's the full set is 17 gigs. Um it was 230 gigs before compression. Oh god. So that's fun. Uh yeah, I just think this is cool. I think this is cool that some some wonderful soul took the time to scan and upload all of these in high in 4K, in high quality. Right. So if I need a manual, because I'm the type of crazy person who would print out a manual and put it in, you know, my game box if I'm missing it. Uh, all right. We also have Netflix expands into cloud gaming. So. <laughs> well, that's like the, that, that really... makes the most sense for them. If they're going to do gaming shit, like whatever game shit they have now is not going to work. And if... whatever game shit they have now is just the dumbest thing because. Yeah. You log into your phone, you tap the game you want to play. You log into Netflix on your phone, you tap the game you want to play. It brings you to the app store, and then you download it from the app store and have to register it with your Netflix account. It's this, you know, bureaucratic nightmare where you have to just go through like two different apps just to play a game. So, uh, meanwhile, this, according to, to uh, TechCrunch Disrupts Netflix VP of Gaming Mike Verdu, 
uh, dropped two bits of news about streaming giants foray into games. Reduce said that Netflix is seriously exploring cloud gaming, um, and the company will also be opening up a new game studio in South Car- uh, California. It's a value add. We are not asking you to subscribe as a console replacement. It's a complete bit. It's a completely different business model. The hope is over time that it just becomes a very natural way to play games wherever you are. Like nobody wants the cloud game, <laughs> but, no. but, but, um, I think it's an interesting proposition to certain people, like people who aren't into video games, people who maybe watch a lot of Netflix, uh, imagine they hear about a new game that came out and they, they're interested and they want to play it. And all they have yeah. is a Netflix subscription maybe an old Xbox controller. <laughs> like that might be the only way they could play a certain game. And that might be uh, interesting to get them roped into to gaming. But yeah, uh, judging by the last couple games Netflix had in their little service. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think this is going to work out. Yeah. I mean, it's shocking how serious these guys are about getting it. Like they said, they're exploring cloud gaming. They just bought, um they start setting up a studio in south Car- uh, california they bought other studios like boss fight entertainment night school studio and uh next games this is something they want to do and you know whether or not they're successful at it remains to be seen google gave up pretty quickly so whether just... or not netflix goes the same route remains to be seen Netflix is in a bad spot uh, because they grew as big as they could, and then uh, they mm. have they, they because they have you know board members and investors and stuff. They need to become bigger. They can't just they can't just be satisfied having yeah. everybody's ten dollar a month subscription. They need more than that, so they need to add more value. And they think that putting games there is going to get people to subscribe that wouldn't have subscribed before. And I just think that's the wrong uh, reason to throw gaming into your portfolio. Well, I think having it because they've been also been buying a lot of rights to make shows about games. Like they have The Witcher, they have that League of Legends show. Well, that makes sense. This that's could be a good, a good idea. way. Yeah. So, like, hey, do you like this show, The Witcher? Well, now you can play the game that is that the show is based on that, that is mind cool. the fact that henry cavill is no longer playing uh the main character and is being played by thor's That's brother so ignore that it's so upsetting <laughs> i i don't i didn't watch the witcher but i know like you can't go from henry cavill to chris hemsworth's he, brother <laughs> he was amazing the first season was so good with him the second season was really only good because of him yeah so i don't know how that is going to work I don't oh, think it man. is. Yeah, I don't. I, I know that a lot of people really loved him in that role. The Rock he was the worst the thing role. to happen to that show because now he's back to playing Super. <laughs> I want to. I, mean, I want to know what happened. I want to know. I want to hear from Henry Cavill what happened. I, I, I remember what reading, happened. He's gonna go be freaking Superman. So that's what I think. But I saw. I was reading online, there's a conspiracy theory going around where a lot of the writers of The Witcher don't play the games. Yes. And he was fighting with the showrunner. Henry Cavill was fighting with the showrunner to make uh, Geralt more like the games. Oh, I I heard the books. They just weren't budging. I heard the books. Or the book, yeah. And and I heard that the people who worked on the show didn't like the books. And Henry Cavill was like, no, we gotta do this, blah, blah, blah. And then they just probably had creative differences. But... Also, he's probably got some supermaning to do, but yeah. like I, well, I think he, he only did took other the things on the before. Witcher. I think he only took the role on The Witcher because Warner Brothers wasn't letting him play Superman anymore. So it's like, fine, I'll go do this. Is that really all he did? I'm pretty sure he had other projects while he was doing. Witcher. Yeah, he was in Mission Impossible. He didn't he do which... Mission Impossible while he was also doing? Uh, yeah, the mustache controversy. Yeah. Yeah, he does yeah. a lot of things. He's a busy man. That's not. I don't think playing Superman's a good enough reason to leave The Witcher. I think there had to have been other reasons that he left. Look, man, do you know how hard it is to paint Warhammer figurines? <laughs> he does. And Henry Cavill's got a lot of Warhammer figurines. 
<laughs> All right, last bit of news is that IKEA sends a cease and desist to an indie game that clearly used their IP. So I don't <laughs> see what the deal is. Swedish retail giant <laughs> IKEA has threatened a legal act developer setting an up over the setting of his upcoming horror title. Developed by Jacob Shaw, The Store is Closed is a cooperative survival game that's currently in development and funding on Kickstarter. The title is set in an infinite furniture store where players need to craft weapons and build fortifications to survive the night while they build towers to the sky to find a way out. Some press, outfit, some press outlets liken the project to a horror game set in Ikea, uh, which is what prompted the retailer to issue a cease and desist letter to Shaw. He has 10 days to change the game and remove all indication associated with the famous Ikea stores. <laughs> Oh also, God. also, I'll I'll note that when I when I saw I didn't see this article, but the article that I saw because I clicked in because I was like, oh, what's this about? It can't big, you know, it's IKEA, like it's a big brand. Like if you just make a big furniture store, it's gonna look like an IKEA. I clicked in. The outside of the store is blue with yellow text, and it <laughs> is four letters. It's very obviously IKEA. So the cease and desist actually does read: Your game uses blue and a blue and yellow sign with a Scandinavian name on the store, a blue box-like building, yellow vertical striped shirts identical to those worn by IKEA personnel, a gray path on the floor, furniture that looks like IKEA furniture, and product signage that looks like IKEA signage. All the foregoing immediately suggests that the game takes place in an IKEA store. All right, so you know what. I feel like usually when they do a cease and desist, they don't go that detailed. So at least Ikea was like, these are the things you need to change. These are the yeah. things we're not happy with. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, th I just think that <laughs> I just think that makes yeah. sense. It's unfortunate that's a big conglomerate versus an indie game, but I mean, yeah, you, you knew what you were doing. <laughs> I mean, I feel like this is something he could just fix. Yeah, like just. just just make the color and the si and the signage like distinctly different. Like make it green and red. Yeah, but and, and, and make it German. Yeah. The yeah. real horror in IKEA are those hot dogs. They're so gross. Hey, hey, man. Hey, hey, man. They're Shit not good. Cinnamon buns though. Costco hot dogs are ten times better. Yeah. Well, well yeah. I, you can't. You're comparing. That. You're comparing. You know an actual steakhouse to Outback Steakhouse at this point. But let me tell you, when you're, when you're, you're trying to in speak mall, his language, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. Are you comparing Costco to a, a, a nice steakhouse? <laughs> yes. When was the last time you were Costco, Costco mother? They're the same thing. <laughs> uh, the point I'm trying to make is when you're trying to wait for uh, the Scorpion King, your showtime of the Scorpion King at the local mall multiplex, and there's an Ikea right there, and you're hungry. You run to the Ikea to get your $2 hot dogs, and then you go run and see the Scorpion King. <laughs> all right. That's all the news. It's time. Yes. That's so loud. <laughs> <laughs> this show has been a shit show. The show has been fantastic. All right, this is from KFC S. And y'all, it yes. says it says Road to Bronze Three, and it's a uh, it's a it's, it's Valorant, a guy dancing around in Valorant. And he's oh my god, flipping a chicken wing instead of a knife. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's fun. I did that for you, Wood. Oh my God, I want to impress, you, I want to impress you with my tweet. I'm very. I'm now very excited for Valorant Tuesdays with you tonight. No, I I have a lot to figure out with my life. <laughs> All right, now we are going to talk to you people very quickly because I have to pee and I have to figure out how I'm going to come up with nine thousand uh, dollars. So do the thing. Thing you do. All right, do this is the part of the show where we talk to you. I'm off with anybody who left comments on last week's Wolf Den podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtubecom slash Wolf podcast. We got Sam, my roommate, who says, uh, wait, wait, we have two weeks, don't we? That doesn't no, make sense. Uh, Sam, who says, you're not buying Bayonetta 3 because the voice actor isn't getting paid enough. I'm not buying Bayonetta 3 because I'm broke. We are not the same. I don't <laughs> think I ever said that. Did I ever yeah. say that? I don't think no, I ever I said No, I think he that. just means the royal you, you know? Like that, uh, that meme of um, Giancarlo Esposito straightening his tie. It's like, we are not the same. Did we? Oh, we did finish the story, though, of how she 
was not telling the truth. <laughs> yes. Okay, we got because our show was after everything already happened. Yes. Yes. Um, we didn't. We did not get to the part where she's asking you to instead donate your money to anti-abortion uh, charities, but that's beside the point. By that point. <laughs> Uh, Cody Mayers says the G4 situation is the same thing I'm experiencing with my game and former sub. Oh, we're going to talk a lot about G4 on this week's <laughs> non-Tendo mm-hmm. podcast. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. The G4 situation is the same thing I'm experiencing with my game and former sub. The subscription was a result as part of my GameStop membership that I only got to get an Xbox and PS5 last year. I have five unread magazines in a drawer because the content is too accessible via YouTube. Okay, that makes sense. Same situation with G4. There's already an established, easier, accessible platform to consume gaming media. That's very good. Also, please yeah, throw I, out the Game Informers. I know it like makes you want to keep them because like you're, <laughs> it's part of your subscription. But like you do not need that in your life. Yeah, I feel creating clutter. It is. It is fascinating to me that Game Informers is still around in 2022. Um, but like Game Informer, like there are. Like the fact that it's a physical thing for you to hold on to, like that that does something to you, man. Like you have a collectible now. You have something physical that you can hold. They they, they also do have like cool covers. That's the thing. Like they have those nice covers that like make you want to like open it up and actually see what you know they're talking about. Uh Kevin Adams says Avatar is the best animated hands down. Fender talking. Last Airbender. I, I don't think anybody in the chat is ever going to Avatar and, movie. And why are we talking about that? <laughs> I don't. Did think we, we talk about animated? I did. We talk about animated shows on that show. Yes. Uh, your favorite is Futurama. Did we say second the, favorite? Oh, what was the <laughs> Simpsons? Oh, I said I think the best was Harvey Birdman. <laughs> I think I think I said Harvey Birdman is the best animated. That is a good animated show. I, look, I've heard nothing but good things about Avatar and The Legend of Korra. One of these days, I will sit down and actually watch all of them. Uh, I played I'm one my Avatar kids to game. Up a little bit. I played so one I Avatar. Yeah. Is a big. No, game. go ahead. I, I I played one Avatar game just so that I could get the really three thousand gamer score. Yeah, so did I, and I, now it's a blight on my Xbox account. The original Avatar is probably the best animated series, I agree. Korra was okay. It was pretty good. Uh, Bat Mabel says, Yo, that Anya Nendroid is awesome. Are you watching Spy uh, Family, Bob? Uh, I, I got four episodes in and then I stopped. Not that it was bad. I just, I have a, an issue with watching uh, sequential like, shows. It doesn't work out for me. <laughs> I'll finish it. And month monthly gamer says, "Why so adamant on keeping a link in a movie? If you want it both ways, just have him speak very minimally, like Samurai Jack." I don't want it both ways. I want to mute. What's the problem? I feel like this the Samurai Jack method. The problem is like Jack's got like a like a very distinct type of voice, and I don't know like if you could do that for Link. Like Jack's like got got kind of a deep voice, and Link. I mean, look at Link. Does he have a deep voice? Also, Samurai Jack talks enough. Yeah, like he like there's a decent amount of talking. It's it's not like he it's not like he says like one or two words an episode. Like, that's full said. Um. Anyway, Gaucho feet. <laughs> uh. Anyway, now we're in the chat real quick. Give us a couple questions. Uh, Lord ben DC Wood. says that you said two stupid dogs was the. That was definitely a joke. <laughs> <laughs> that was. A... Hey guys, what table top, what board slash tabletop games do you like playing on your time off? I'm addicted to Marvel Crisis. Uh, all right, so here's my sh- spiel about tabletop games. I don't games. play anything. Me neither. Me neither. I. I don't have a problem that people like board games, and I don't have a problem with people into board games. I like where this is going. I am just constantly shocked and baffled how 
big board gaming is because it is like people who like I just meet or people I've known for a very long time is like, oh yeah, I'm into board gaming. Here's my entire collection. And it like rivals my comic book collection. I'm like, what is this? Like, how do you have all these games? What the fuck are all these yeah, games? And you know they're not playing. I mean, I could say the same thing about video games. I'm yeah. Playing all of those. <laughs> but like I, it's just I'm I'm constantly in awe at how popular board gaming is. And like my favorite board game is Clue, which I can <laughs> buy at Target for five bucks right now. I and meanwhile, these people have like you know six hundred dollar you know pandemic legacy crossover zombie edition whatever. The last board game I played was. Uh, <laughs> either of you tried Marvel Snap? I see a lot of people playing Marvel. I stopped I seen at first, but it's gotten more depth than I gave it credit for. I, I have seen a lot of people play Marvel Snap, and it makes me interested to like at least look at it because I'm surprised that like it like Marvel's got like 30 games on the App Store, and they're all the same type of bullshit. But this one is apparently taking off. I Chris BX is here, and I want to give him a uh, uh, credit here because he's the one who does the timestamps on the YouTube video for the Ben podcast. Yeah, goes up on YouTube. I'm stamps for when we talk about certain topics. He hasn't done the last couple, and I was like, whatever, it's not a big deal. Like I don't, yeah. like I'm, I'm not gonna do it because I don't want to do it. <laughs> so they, the last couple just didn't have timestamps. Out of nowhere, he gave me all of the timestamps for all of the ones that he missed, all <laughs> backed up. So now I have to go through all of the old ones and put all the timestamps oh, back. Oh man. In. Uh, anyway, thanks, Chris BX. Everybody, <laughs> thank him if you like to use the timestamps. Yeah. Um, hey, Bob, very much enjoyed the factor ad in your new video. Very much. Thank you. Uh, Wood enjoyed it too, right? When you got hit in the eye? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's the part? Okay. Mm -hmm. I saw it. I watched your video today. I know. I know. You left a comment. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, what, yeah. that's what I'm referring to. That's I, I, appre I appreciated the Easter egg. <laughs> Uh, I was slacking those damn fourth graders, taking up all my time. I'm guessing a teacher. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> the worst kind of profession. <laughs> mm. Was allowed to say that. Yes. Um, at least, you know, I feel like middle school kids are the worst type of kids. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, also, how's your internet there? It's great. I'm on Wi-Fi now because for some fucking stupid reason, I decided to do the podcast here instead of just the other room which had a wired <laughs> connection. I don't know. I'm I'm all fucked up. Um, Bob, the Logitech G Cloud, you can actually put in put it in Android normal mode, but it's in settings a bit buried. Uh, I gotta find that. That's because they be don't a, want you to do that. <laughs> I I looked. I I I dug around for like a good. How how long does it take for me to get frustrated and stop? Probably like ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. ETA Prime shut it off. That I, whenever I post a video saying something definitively, I'm scared because I don't watch other people's videos on on things because I don't want to create a bias and like talk about the same things that they do. I don't want to accidentally like steal stuff that they. I don't right. want to accidentally steal from other people, uh, like plagiarize. So I don't watch other people's stuff. So frequently when I post a video, I'll immediately get told that, oh, you could do this because another YouTuber said it. And like, it's something that I never would have known. So it's, it sucks that that happens very frequently. But um, yeah, I'll have to love. Retro Game Core? Oh, it was retro. Yeah, I didn't watch it. I? No, I didn't watch his video. Sometimes I will frequently watch Retro Game Core's videos before I do a review because he actually does tutorials on how to set it up. So that's a little different. Um, you also check out S Signalis. It reminded me of the Anno game Wood recommended. But apparently it's like Silent Hill or Resident Evil. It's been getting good reviews. Hmm. Ignalist? I'll check it out. Sig yeah. Signalis. I saw a tweet. All right. I'll leave it in a tab. Yeah, I'll, I'll write it down. <laughs> All right. I got to go. Do okay. Uh, 
for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, as every PM right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go and watch us over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, we can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Sorry, wow. Will's, uh, Will's, for me, Will's mic cuts out every once in a while, but I know it's my fault because stupid fucking ears being weird. I um, heard it a little who. Oh, maybe it, maybe. Um, well, what happened? Your mic cut out like. Uh, yeah. What? Thanks for being here. Thanks for, thanks yeah, for, thank you for thanks joining for us. Swooping us, swooping in at the last second. Yeah. Surprise. <laughs> You're welcome. I did so much. It, you did actually for yeah <laughs> for a long time. If you weren't mm-hmm. here, I would have just been. I would have just been talking about Batman for like a good forty minutes until I, Bob came I back. I would have happily talked about Batman with you, buddy. <laughs> well, if you liked this episode of the, the Wolf Den podcast, you can hear more of me and Wood over on the Nintendo podcast. So true. In so just a true. couple of days. Just a yeah. Right now, everybody go watch uh, Abe. He is streaming Roller Drome. Ooh, that's a good one. He will very much appreciate that message. Yes. A little hey in the chat when you go over there. Uh, I'm not going to stream for a while again. I think the next one's going to be another Wolf Den uh, podcast. I'm sorry, but I'm doing a lot of things. And I have to make another video. Uh, there's a lot going <laughs> He's on. Got to make here. a lot of money in a really short amount. Yes, of time. <laughs> I have to. I have to figure out how to do some illegal activities. Um, thanks for watching. Go say hi to Abe. Uh, we will see you later. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye.